Hello everyone, welcome back to Shortcode. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be teaching you Python in 10 minutes. So I'll try and teach you everything there is to know in Python within 10 minutes. It might be a bit under 10 minutes, might be a bit over. Let's just see how it goes. But anyway, the first thing you want to do is just open up a web browser and go to python.org. And then if you come into downloads and just hit downloads, uh, then you can download the latest version of Python. Once you've got that installed, you should be able to just type in idle down here. Now idle is the way you can write Python code basically. So basically to make a new Python file, just like a new Word document or a whatever, just hit new file and this is where we'll write all our code. Now this is the shell which is where the code actually runs and this is where we write our code. So first things first, let's just get some output. So to do output in Python, what you want to do is you want to type in print and then a bracket and then um, and then speech marks and then type in anything you want so I'll just type in hello and then another set of speech marks and close the bracket and then if you save it then we can go to run run module and then we can see we get the output of hello so you could change this to whatever you want it might be like if I just type in some random stuff there you can hit run and then run module then you see we get the output that we put in here Okay, now moving on to what are called variables. Now variables are like a container or a box that you can store things in basically. So we might have a variable called my variable and we set it equal to what we want it to store. So I want it to store hello. Like a box, it's storing the word hello. So if you print out my variable and if we run it, hitting F5, we can see we get hello outputted. Now this is different if we use speech marks here. If we put in speech marks there, we would get my variable, which we don't want. So if you remove the speech marks, you'll end up printing out a variable. Um, now let's learn about input. So input is obviously a way of getting input from the user. So I might say, uh, I don't know, name equals input. And then here we say, how, uh, what is your name? And then here we can just print out name. So we're printing out a variable. So we've got a variable here, which is equal to the input that the user will type in. And then we'll just print out the name. So it, what is your name? My name is Caleb. And if we run that, we get our name printed out, which is Caleb. So next, let's learn about changing variables. Say we've just got a name here. Then let's set name equal to, I don't know, Jeff. And then if we print name again, And we run it, we can see we get, it's a, just let me expand it here. What's your name? Uh, Caleb. So we get Caleb printed out, but we also get Jeff printed out, even though we're just printing name again. Um, so basically we can change variables. That's why they're called variables because they can be changed. Some other ways you can change variables is if they're a number, you can add and subtract from them or multiply or whatever. So if we just have a num here and set it to five, then we can do num plus equals five. So basically what this plus equals will do is it'll add 5 onto it. So if we print out num here, so printing out num before we add 5 and print num after we've added 5, we'll get 5 and then we'll get 10. So this plus equals will add a number in the same way minus equals will take away a number. So we get 0 there. We can also do multiplication. So if we add a star in there, that times is it. So we'll get 25. And... Uh, we can also divide with a slash and we'll get one. Num equals input. So we're getting some input and we type in enter a number. And then we have um, num plus equals five or four, whatever. And then we print out num. So if we run it now and we'll enter a number, I don't know, let's enter seven. We'll get an error. Can only concatenate str, not int to str. So what that means is, um, it's to do with data types. So the so the data type of this variable num here is a string. Now a string is basically just a word or a phrase. Now an integer is a number. It's a whole number basically. We also have um floating point numbers, which is basically just a number with a decimal. Uh, and the thing is, in Python, you can't add together a string or an integer. Even though we inputted a, uh, a number here, uh, the reason it's a string is because all input in Python is a string. To convert something from a data type to another data type, we can use casting. 
So to cast this input to an integer, you can just surround it with brackets and type in int before it. So this will convert a string to an integer. Now, if we run it, enter a number, if we type in two, we'll get six. Now, the thing to remember is you can't convert a string to an integer if the string itself contains anything but numbers. So if we typed in like some letters here, then we'll get an error because we can't convert this right here into an integer. It just doesn't make sense. Now let's talk about booleans. There's another data type in Python. Uh, it's called a boolean and it's basically just a true or false value. So we might have um, boolean equals true. So, and let's just print out boolean and we get a true. Then we can change it to false and then we'll get out false. Um, now it's basically just a true or false true or false value, and the main reason why we use booleans is in if statements, so to compare things. Now let's learn about if statements. So we might have, um, let's have, uh, I don't know, uh, boolean equals true. If boolean equals true, print boolean, oh, print boolean is true, else print not true. So if we run it, we'll get boolean is true, and then we'll change it to false. Uh, we'll get not true. Now this is what we call an if statement. It takes some data and it compares it against something. So here we're comparing it to check if it's true or not. Now the double equals, we have to use double equals here because that's comparing it rather than setting it equal to something. So when we use a single equals, we're setting it to a value, but when we use double equals, we're comparing it. So if we change this up here to say like a string, so just to hello, and then we'll change this to string. If string equals hello, print, uh, let's just print yes and no. So if it's equal to hello, then we'll output yes. And if it's not, we'll output no. So we get yes, and then and then if we change it to uh, something else, and we run it, we'll get no. So we can also use um, the different kinds of comparison operators here. So you might have a greater than or equals, less than or equals. Um, there's loads of different ones you can use. Those are just some examples. Now moving on to lists and tuples. Now a list uh, is basically just a very it's a data type, and it's basically just a list of items. So we might have um, I don't know, my variable. And this is how you create a list with two square brackets. And then the list might be filled with strings. So we could have, hello, this is a list. Now we separate items in a list with commas. If we just print out uh, my variable, uh, we just get the list printed out right here. And then to get a particular item out of a list, we can just uh, index, we can use these square brackets here. And then to get the first item of a list, we have to type in zero. So if we run it, we get a uh, hello outputted down here. So that's the first item. Now to get the second item, we have to use one. Third item, we have to use two. To get an item of a list, you always have to start at zero, basically. So if we have two here and we run it, we'll get is outputted because this is item zero, this is item one, and this is item two. And to add an item to the list, you can just do my variable dot append uh, another item. And then if we print out my variable and run it, we'll get our list. And you can see at the end, we've got another item added. So let's talk about while loops now. So I'll just make a quick example. So, so we've just got this example here. So we've got num equals zero while num is less than 10, print num is less than 10, and then we add one to num. So this should loop over 10 times. We're starting at zero. Every loop, we're going to add one. So we get it printed out 10 times right here. A while loop basically continues forever unless the condition here is not true. And this is true because num is less than 10. So when num gets to 10, then this loop will stop. So that's while loops. Now let's talk about for loops. They're a bit more complicated, but they're pretty easy, I guess. We just have a list with some items in it. Now we can do for item in my list, and then we print item, and we run it. We'll run through each item in the list, and we'll print it out. So a for loop 
basically just runs through a variable and then it'll do something based on that variable. So for every item in the list, we're going to print out the item. Now this here, it doesn't have to be called item. We could call it whatever we wanted. So we might have just for E in my list. Let's print out E. Then we get the exact same output. Now let's quickly talk about functions. It's a section of code that can be used over and over again. Right here, this is our function. It's called my func, and to create a function, you need to write define, and then followed by the name of a the function, then two uh, circular brackets, followed by a colon, and then everything in the function needs to be tabbed over. So if we run this now, uh, you can see that nothing actually happens. And this is because the function has been defined, but it's not actually run. So to run a function, or to call a function, we just need to type in the name of it with some brackets on the end. So if we save it and we run it, we can see we get the function run. And we can run a function as many times as we want. So if I just copy this right here, do it three times, and we get hello, this is a function, three times over. So that was a very brief introduction to Python. Um, I didn't really go into much explanation or detail because there's quite a lot of stuff to cover in 10 minutes. Um, but hopefully that just gave you a little idea of what Python's about and some of the things in Python. Uh, if you want to go into more detail, you can check out my beginners playlist for Python up here, somewhere around here, I don't know. Uh, or if you want to go a little bit more advanced, you can check out my intermediate playlist somewhere around here as well. If you found this video useful, then a like would be appreciated. It really does help me out. If you have any questions about Python, then just leave them in the comments below. I will get back to you. Um, otherwise, that's it from me. Cheers and goodbye.